Okay, now in our enrichment today, I have you solving various proportions here. And um, we actually did something like this earlier this year, like in September. You're solving a proportion, okay? Solving for the x variable. 4 over x plus 4 is equal to x over x plus 25. Well, with I can't cross multiply and divide, so what I do with each ratio is label it a taking this times this in a proportion is always equal to this times this, C times D. So I organize this into parentheses, two parentheses on each side of the equation. And I know that always taking A times B is equal to taking C times D, always. Okay? As long as there's only two ratios. Okay, so my A is 4 and my B is X plus 25. My C is X, and then my D is X plus 4. Now, what's going to happen here is a quadratic equation arises. Okay, So I distribute 4, and that's 4X plus 100. Okay? Now, over here, you're going to get X times X is X to the second, and then X times 4 is 4X. Four okay? So the X has two answers, I think, because it's to the second power. And not only that, there's also x's in here that aren't to the second power. So we need to do set, okay, and then try to factor it. Set and factor. Okay, so you need to set your equation equal to zero. That's what set means. Set equals to zero and factor. So you need to clear one side entirely. Now you always want, don't clear the side with the x squared. You want to keep it 1x squared. You don't want to mess with that. So you clear this side, minus 4x. And I can subtract that from 4x. That's probably going to be 0. Minus 100. And 100 has nowhere to go, so I just put that at the end. So I have 1x to the second. Now 4x minus 4x is 0. So I'm just going to have the minus 100. And over on this side, on the other side, I've cleared everything, so it's equal to 0. Now, I don't need to factor then, okay? I can get the x squared by itself because there's not that other x with it in the equation. So I can add 100 to both sides. Then 1x squared equals 100. I don't need to divide because it's just a 1. Now, what number times itself is 100? What's the square root of 100? It's 10. So you could have 10 or negative 10 as a solution right there. Okay, let's go to the next one. I have 3 over m minus 1 equals 2m over m plus 4. So again, I have to solve for m. Well, I can't cross multiply and divide. That's not going to make any sense. I'm going to cross multiply, but I can't. It's not as quick as just CMAD. So A, B, C, D. Because I know in a proportion with two ratios, one on each side, I can always set the, take the A times the B equal to the C times the D. And again, the reason this works, don't write this down, but it, like a half and four eighths, those are obviously equal. Those are proportion. That forms a proportion. Well, one times eight's eight, and two times four is eight. Okay? And that works with any one like that. Okay, so A is three, and B is M plus four. C is two M, and then D is M minus one. Okay? So I distribute the 3. That's just going to be 3m plus 12. Now on the other side, I'm going to put a 1 in front of the m, so I have something to go with the 2. So I take 2m times 1m, and that's 2m to the second power. And then 2m times negative 1 is negative 2m, so minus 2m. So again, like on the last problem, m has two solutions. Okay. And again, you also have an M that isn't to the second, so you need to clear one side, set it equal to zero. That's your first thing, okay? So again, leave the M to the second side alone. Get rid of the stuff over here, okay? And that can be subtracted from negative 2M. Then the minus 12 is just going to hang out here. So my new equation is now, I've rewritten the equation, so it's now 2m to the power of 2. Negative 2 minus 5, 3 is negative 5m. 
then minus 12 equals 0. Well, now I can't get the end of the second by itself because there's that other m there. So I need to do my GCFT because there's three terms. Okay. GCFT. Okay. Now the GCF, you don't need the negative. You don't need m because 12 doesn't contain m. Then 2, 5, and 12 have 1 as the GCF. Okay. So delete that so a b c 2 times negative 12 is negative 24 so it's a negative product so it's a minus and I'm trying to get the minus to equal 5 negative so first just focus on trying to get the numbers to subtract to 5 so 1 and 24 no 2 and 12 no 3 and 8 booyah so 5 is negative so my 8's negative I got a negative up there on 24. That means the signs have to be opposite. So it's plus 3 minus 8. Now my a up there is not 1. Okay, It's 2m to the second. So that means to factor this correctly, I need to make two sets of parentheses. So 2m plus 3, and then 2m minus 8. 2 and 3, the GCF's 1, so that would just stay 2m plus 3. GCF out of 8, 2 and 8 is 2, and that would become 1m or just m. If it's 1m, you can just put it as m minus 4 equals 0. Okay, You didn't do a GCF, so you got your F1, F2 right there. So 2m plus 3 could equal 0, m minus 4 equals 0. Well, I know that one's probably 4, Okay, so 4. And the other one, subtract 3, I'm at negative 3, divided by 2, and that's going to be negative 3 over 2. Okay, those are your two solutions. Okay, now in the next part, we run into a little bit of a problem. It's a proportion, but there's three total ratios. Okay, you've never solved a problem like that before for a variable. Here's what you have to do. So you can't obviously do the ABC. Okay, that's not going to work. What you're going to do is simply extend the fraction line. So there's a fraction. So they're longer. Okay. Now leave this. This is for workspace. Don't write anything in there yet. And what you do, on top you got a 1. There's no plus or minus within the top right there, so I just drop it. 2, drop it, 1, drop it, and then drop the these two. There's no pluses and minuses. I mean, there's pluses and minuses outside of the ratios, but within the ratios themselves, we just have a 2x and x. If the bottom on this problem, at the bottom, instead of just x, it was x plus 3, then x plus 3 would need to go into parentheses. Okay? But they're all just one, just single terms. Now what you need to do is come up with a LCD, a lowest common denominator. Now look at the bottoms. I'm going to cover up the tops with the cameras. Okay. Because so LCD, you have a two. Underline it. You have x, and then you have another x. But I've already wrote down x, so now we're good. Those are the ones I have to look at. So how many twos are on the bottom of that first ratio? One. How many twos are on the bottom of the second ratio? None. Zero. How many twos are on the bottom of that one? Zero. So these zeros, we need to raise them up so they have one. Okay. So what I do then is put a two here, and then I need to times the top by two. I put a two here, times the top by two. Now they all have one two. Now let's talk about x. How many x's do you see in the denominator there? Zero. How about here? One. Okay. How about here? One. Okay. All right, so we need to raise that one up so it has one. So what we do is put an x there, and then you also got to put it on top. Now your denominators are all the same. So in an equation, what you can do once they're all the same is you can just forget about the denominators. They can cancel out. Okay. Then I have 1x, 
and 2 times 2 is 4, and then 1 times 2 is 2. There's only one answer. Just get the x by itself, minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and I don't need to divide by 1. You can, but it's not really necessary. Negative 2 is a solution. Okay. okay, now the next one. 5, we have a whole number, plus 2 over p equals 17 over p. Okay, now you're like, what? How do we handle it if there's not, if it's a proportion, but there's a whole number and then two fractions? Well, you're going to make that underline the five. Now you're like, would I put a one? Would it be five over one? No, don't put the one. Okay, do not put the one. Pretend that that's an empty denominator. Okay, now you still need to get all the bottoms to be the same. Okay, so again, you don't have to, you got five. You got the single term of 2, 17, and then nothing. Leave that empty, and then you got P and P. So LCD. So I don't have any denominator in the first one, and then I have P, and then another P. So all I have to worry about is the factor of P. So I have zero P's there. I have one P there, and then one P here. Okay. So I need to raise that zero up so it has one. So I put a P there, and then you also got to bring it to the top. Okay, now they're good. The bottoms are all the same, because so I can disregard the denominators, and I have 5P plus 2 equals 17. Now I subtract 2 from both sides, and 5P equals 15, divide by 5, and P equals 3. Okay, now the next one's very similar, okay? It's a proportion, so I make a fraction, and then I have to rewrite the problem so that they have common denominators. So I have 3, negative 5, 2, and then A, A, and leave that empty. So my lowest common denominator, I have an A, Another A, which I don't need to write again. Once you wrote it down once, you don't need to write that category again. And then nothing. So A is really the only factor I worry about in the LCD. So I have 1, 1, and 0. That's how many factors of A the denominator has. So we need to raise that one up so it has 1. So I go here, here. Now my bottoms are the same. I cross them out. So I have 3 plus negative 5 equals 2a. Now, these are like terms. We combine those, okay? Neither one of them have a's, so, you know, we can just add those. That would be negative 2 equals 2a. And then divide by 2. Negative 1 equals a. Okay, now there's a little bit of a curveball to the next one, and there's more than one way to do this, okay, just so just to let you know. This is the way I like to do it. This is just me, okay? It's a little bit different than anybody else would go. Okay, now again, you got three proportions. So on top, you got 5, 3, and 9. Now on the bottom you got two factors. Now there's not the plus sign between the two and the x. So then what you do is you write that as two times x. Here's just a four, and then rewrite that as four times x. That's what four x means. Now don't parenthesize if it's a times operation. Okay. Now there's more than one way to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to just explain. Okay. Now, on bottom, I have two factors. I have a 2 and I have an x. Those are two separate factors. Here I have a 4. Here I have another 4. Well, I already have 4, and I have x. Well, I already have x. Okay. Now, let's talk about 2s. Okay. So 2s, you got 1, 0, 0. So we want to raise those zeros up so they have one. So I need to bring in a two here and a two here. Two here, two here. Now they each have one two. 
x, we have one factor of x here, zero factors of x here, and one factor of x there. So that zero, we're going to need to raise up by a factor of x. Okay. Now they all have one x. Now they're pretty well good, except this one's missing a four. It has zero factors of four, one, and one. Okay. So we need to raise that zero so it has one four. So, but when I do it to the bottom, I also got to raise the top, multiply the top. Now they're all the same. Okay. So I can now delete those. And then 5 times 4 is 20, okay? And then that would be 6x, and that would be 18, okay? And then I can just subtract 20, which is negative 2, divide by 6. Now I'm going to leave that as a fraction because it's a decimal, but it does reduce. It would be negative 1 third instead of negative 2 6, okay? Now, another way you could have done that with your LCD, okay, is you're going to have your factor of X, okay? That's a given, okay? Now, 2 and 4, you know, you could have also raised the, instead of like doing 2 and 4 separately, you could have multiplied that by 2 and that by 2, okay? And then you would add 4 and 4 and then done the X and the X, okay? You would have ended up in the same place, okay? Because 2 and 4, the LCD would be 4, okay? I like to do it like this. It's a little bit less confusing, but standard procedure would say, okay, so you got 2 and 4 as your denominators. Well, I could multiply that by 2 and that by 2, and I'd end up with 4 in every one, and I wouldn't have to worry about having a 2, okay?